Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 14 of AZ900 Q&A series, once again, I have another important set of 20 latest questions on AZ900. And today I'm going to focus on enhancing a lot of your Azure concepts by taking yes no kind of questions that have appeared in the previous AZ900 exams. And not to mention I've got a lot of Microsoft documentation so that you can validate the answer and also do some self study. And as always my friends a free PDF file is waiting for you towards the end of this video containing all the questions from the previous part 13 and this part 14 a must have tool for you if you want to study offline. And in case you are joining us for the first time, please note that we have already covered 245 latest questions. So please do not miss to watch the previous part of this series. Each question is important and you do not want to miss any of those before your examination. Links to all the previous parts are shared in the description box. So let's jump in and prepare for AZ 900 exam. So let's begin part 14 with question number 246. The question says a company is planning on moving to Microsoft Azure. Senior management wants to get an idea on the cost that will be incurred if they decide to host resources within Azure. The solution given is that you recommend using Azure cost management to get the required costing for the resources. Would this recommendation fit the requirement? Yes or no? And the correct answer to this question is no. And this is because Azure cost management is a native Azure cost management solution. And this tool helps you analyze the cost, create and manage budgets, export data, and also you can do some cost optimization. And you can understand more on Azure cost management on this Microsoft documentation. It says cost management plus billing helps you understand your Azure invoice, manage your billing account and subscription, monitor and control Azure spending and optimize resource use. So in case you want to do some further self learning on Azure cost management, the link is provided in the description box. So now that we know the Azure cost management is not the correct answer. What is the correct answer? Let's find out in the next two variations of the same question. So here comes question number 247. The question is exactly the same. However, this time the solution says that you recommend using cloud YN service to get the required costing of the resources. Would this recommendation fit the requirement? Yes or no? And in this case also my friends, the correct answer is no. And to be honest, you don't need to learn about Azure Cloud YN service because this service is already depreciated and no longer exists. And the same you can observe here, Microsoft clearly says that Cloud DN was depreciated on June 30th, 2021 and no longer exists. And further it tells you that now you have to use Azure Cost Management, the service that we observed in the last question. So now let's move on to the third variation of the same question, question number 248. Question is exactly the same. However, this time solution says that you recommend use of total cost of ownership TCO calculator. Would this recommendation fit the requirement? Yes or no? And this time, my friends, the correct answer is yes, because total cost of ownership or TCO calculator is the service that gives you an idea on the cost that will be incurred if you decide to move your resources within Azure. And you can gain more information on TCO total cost of ownership calculator on this Microsoft documentation. And this documentation tells you that TCO calculator can be used to estimate the cost saving that you can realize by migrating your workloads to Microsoft Azure. So this is a very good Microsoft Azure tool that you can use or your company can use in case you or your company are thinking about moving your infrastructure to Microsoft Azure. So once again, let me summarize for you. Cost management and billing helps you understand your Azure invoice or bill, manage your billing account and subscriptions. So this is very simple to understand. You are using Microsoft Azure services and for that use, Microsoft is billing you, sending you an invoice and cost management helps you understand that invoice from Microsoft and manage your billing accounts. And then on the flip side, Azure total cost of ownership or TCO calculator is used to estimate the cost saving that you can achieve by migrating your application workloads to Microsoft Azure. And that's exactly what was asked in the question as well. That's why total cost of ownership calculator is the correct answer. 
Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 249. It says your company has a website that is being threatened by an attacker to bring it down by sending large volume of network traffic to your service. And you have to tell which Azure service can help your company to protect its app service instance from this kind of attack. Your options are Azure Policy, Azure Firewall, Azure DDoS Protection and the last one is Network Security Groups. And the correct answer for this question is option C, Azure DDoS Protection. And what is a DDoS attack? Well, DDoS attack attempts to overwhelm or exhaust your application resources by making the application slow by throwing large volume of network traffic to your servers. And this makes your application slow, unresponsive to the legitimate users. And I want to take one more question on DDoS protection and then I will give you Microsoft documentation. So here comes question number 250. It says when deployed with a web application firewall also known as WAF, Azure DDoS protection protects both at network layer and application layer. Yes or no? And this my friends is a correct answer. And now as promised, this is the Microsoft documentation on Azure DDoS protection. Here you can read that distributed denial service DDoS attacks are some of the largest availability and security concerns facing customers that are moving their application to the cloud. A DDoS attack attempts to exhaust an application resources making an application unavailable to the legitimate user. DDoS attacks can be targeted at any endpoint that is publicly reachable through the internet. And here you can also see the graphical representation of these DDoS attacks. A lot of good information like key benefits of DDoS protection is given on this documentation. I recommend you to read this very critical service or very important service that protects your web applications. And friends to further enhance your knowledge, here is a bit of information. You can see that DDoS protection, Azure DDoS protection operates on network layer, which is layer 3 and 4. It also operates on application layer, which is layer 7. And that's why we have chosen yes for this question. Coming up now is question number 251. It says logs in Azure Monitor are stored in which of the following services? Your options are Azure Log Analytics Workspace, Azure Event Hubs, Azure Stream and the last one is Azure Cosmos DB. And the correct answer for this question is option A, Azure Log Analytics Workspace. And we can validate our answer for this question on this Microsoft documentation, Azure Monitor Data Platform. In this documentation, you have to reach to the section which says logs. And here in this section, it clearly says that logs are events that occurred within the system. And then it also tells you that logs in Azure Monitor are stored in Log Analytics Workspace. And that's exactly what we have also chosen as the answer to this question. Moving on to the question number 252, it says Azure File Sync enables centralizing your organization's file shares in Azure files while keeping the flexibility, performance and compatibility of a Windows file server. And the correct answer to this question is yes. So what is Azure File Sync? Well, Azure File Sync enables centralizing your organization file shares in the Azure files while keeping the flexibility, performance and compatibility of a Windows file server. While some of the users may opt to keep a full copy of their data locally, Azure File Sync additionally has the ability to transform Windows Server into a quick cache of your Azure file share. And that's why this is a correct statement. Moving on to the next question, question number 253 says, the archive access tier is set at storage account level. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement. And this answer can be validated in this notes section of this Microsoft documentation. It clearly says that the archive tier is not supported as the default access tier for a storage account. Moving on to the question number 254, it says the hot access tier is recommended for data that is accessed and modified frequently. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement. And that's why we have chosen a yes for this statement. And now that we are talking about archived here, the next question, question number 256 says, to read a blob that is in the archived here, you must first rehydrate the blob to an online tier, hot or cold tier. Yes or no? 
and of course this is a true statement and that's why it's a yes and you can very well validate the answer on this microsoft documentation it clearly says for the archive tier rehydrate to hot tier with set blob tier or copy blob similarly it also tells you rehydrate to cold tier with set blob tier or copy blob the links to all this important documentation is already available in the description box and friends if you're learning with me so far please do not forget to press that like button and with that let's move on to the next question question number 257 says archive tier provides 99.99% of availability yes or no and this one my friends is a incorrect statement that's why we have chosen no for this question now let's validate our answer why we have chosen a no well this documentation clearly says that archive tier is a offline access tier that's why it does not provide 99.99% of availability and in case you're looking forward for that kind of availability you can see there is a option here which says ra grs reads and that is available under hot tier coming up next is question number 259 that says you have multiple virtual machines processing each order that comes from a web application that runs the website these virtual machine exist on a azure virtual network but they need to access the internet what's the best way to limit all outbound traffic from virtual machine to known host your options are configure azure ddos protection to limit network access to trusted ports and hosts the second option is create application rules in azure firewall the third one is ensure that all running applications communicate with only trusted ports and host and the correct answer for this question is option b create application rules in azure firewall and this is because azure firewall enables you to limit the outbound http or https traffic to a specified list of fully qualified domain names also known as fqdns and now comes question number 260 it says azure ad can save logs in azure monitor yes or no and this one my friends is a true statement moving on with our next question question number 261 says that you can integrate on premises active directory domains with azure active directory yes or no and this is a valid statement that's why yes is the correct answer coming up next is question number 262 it says you have multiple virtual machines in azure virtual network now you want to implement a deny by default policy so that the virtual machines cannot connect to each other what is the best way to do the same your options are configure azure ddos protection to limit the network access to trusted ports and hosts the next option is create application rules in azure firewall the last one is ensure that all the running applications communicate with only trusted ports and hosts now i am pretty sure that you must be thinking that question number 259 and 262 which is this one are exactly the same however there is a small difference between both the questions and you can consider this as your homework please go ahead rewind the video compare the two questions and let me know the differences in the comment section but in case you do not find any differences or you're having any difficulty understanding both these questions but for now the correct answer for this question is option b create an application rules in azure firewall why the reason i explained in that previous question as well and now comes question number 263 it says azure site recovery provides dash for virtual machines and you have to choose between fault tolerance disaster recovery elasticity and high availability and the correct answer for this question is option b disaster recovery so now let's understand what is site recovery it says that as an organization you need to adopt a business continuity and disaster recovery bcdr strategy that keeps your data safe and your apps and workloads online when planned and unplanned outages occur and then it tells you azure recovery services contributes to your bcdr strategy and all the main pointers are listed on this documentation and you can understand what does the site recovery provides all the information around site recovery is available in this documentation 
Now let's jump on to the next question. Question number 264. It says resource groups provides organization with the ability to manage the compliance of Azure resources across multiple subscriptions. And further the instructions given in the question says that review the underlying text. Here is the underlying text. If it makes the statement correct, then you have to select no change needed. You can see the very first option is no change needed. Further it says if the statement is incorrect, then you have to select the answer choices that makes the statement correct. So basically if you feel this statement with this underlying text is correct, then you have to choose no change needed. Otherwise you have to make this statement correct by choosing the other three options which are management groups, Azure policies and the last one is Azure app service plans. And the correct answer to this question is option B management groups. And now let's move on to the question number 265. It says which tool enables users to authenticate to multiple applications by using single sign on better known as SSO. And your options are Azure resource group, Azure active directory, Azure advisor and the last one is Azure monitor. And the correct answer for this question is option B Azure Active Directory. And here comes our free PDF file to get the free PDF file of all the questions with the answers discussed in part 13 and this part 14. You have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 230, 237, 245, 249, 259 and 263. You can send in your answers in the comment section below or email us at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com. So friends, I am sure that you must have gained some great Azure concepts with these yes no kind of questions. If yes, please support us and help us grow. I request you to please press the like button, subscribe to the channel. Both are free for you, but this is the only way for us to expand and reach to more and more cloud learners just like you. And friends, with you sharing our videos, we can reach to everyone who is preparing for Microsoft Azure certifications. And that's all for today. Any queries, doubts or maybe some question is not clear. Please do reach me in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.